Thank you, Patricia. That was a lovely uh, introduction. I wouldn't call it short, but uh, it was it was very it was very nice. Uh, I am honored to, to be here and honored by your presence. I especially appreciate the students traveling uh, so far. I happen to live out in the country myself, uh, so I know what it's like to drive on uh, windy roads. We try to avoid hitting deer on our roads. I'm not sure about you. Do you have cell phone coverage where you live? In the country where in, there's only supposed to be 5% of the United States now that's not covered by cell phone with cell phone coverage and I happen to live in one of those uh, one of those places so the world is passing me by I can I can feel it um, but it is indeed an honor to be here uh, I'd like to thank Guardian Life for uh, supporting this I have given uh, many lectures and programs and uh, in my long career this is only the uh, second time I had the uh, amazing good fortune of being invited to do uh, both uh, premium open lectures for Guardian this year, one at the University of the West Indies in Trinidad just two weeks ago and now uh, in Jamaica. And uh, I missed hurricanes in both places, so life is, uh, life is good. Uh, but I had a wonderful meeting this morning with the uh, folks at Guardian and we did have Jamaican breakfast. There was so much food that I haven't had to eat uh, anything since then. Well, that's not quite true. I was uh, passed uh, through the uh, lobby uh, in the hotel and um, they had um, rum raisin ice cream. Do you know how hard it is to find rum raisin ice cream in the States? And it's one of my favorites. And this really had rum in it too. So. Uh, <laughs> I might be having that for supper too. Uh, anyway, I'm happy to be able to spend some time here with you. Uh, the title of the lecture is quite long, Developing Critical uh, Thinking for Today's Global Society's Contributions of Learner-Centered Teaching. When you have a professor that has a really long lecture like that, you know what happens. It has to be a really long lecture to cover the whole topic. But they've taken care of that here because they're serving cocktails, probably not to you guys, um, afterwards. And so uh, we will hurry on through the uh, hurry on through the material. Um, I really have a fairly simple structure uh, that I'd like to follow tonight. I really want to talk about uh, three questions that have to do with the theme for the program. The first one is I think we need to figure out what we're talking about when we say critical thinking, what is critical thinking, and uh, sort of inherent in that question is the second question, why is it important? When you know what it is, it's pretty obvious why it's important. Then I also want to address the question of whether or not we can actually teach students to critically think. And if we can, what are some good ways of going about doing that? And finally, I want to talk a little bit about what it is about learner-centered teaching that makes it a particularly effective way to try to teach and develop uh, critical thinking skills. So we'll uh, organize our remarks around uh, those three uh, questions. And I do hope it would be sort of sad to give a lecture on critical thinking and not stimulate some critical thinking. Uh, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to say some things that will uh, cause you to do some thinking and some conversation. One the difficulties with the lecture, of course, is that um, uh, there's no uh, opportunity really for interaction. I'm looking forward to the workshop tomorrow where we'll be able to get into it. But I'll try to say some sort of stimulating and provocative things that hopefully will encourage you to do a little uh, critical thinking as a, as a, as a consequence of uh, being here. So let's start out by talking a little bit about what critical thinking is and why it's uh, important. There are literally a thousand and one different definitions for critical thinking and as, as with much uh, many other things in educational research, um, there's no sort of definitive study that identifies the best definition for critical thinking. There's no resident authority who designates one as the right definitions for critical thinking. What I think most of the definitions share in common is the fact that critical thinking involves cognitive processes. It involves mental processes. And these processes are used to discover or to construct uh, knowledge. They're used to integrate knowledge. 
cognitive processes that uh, are called critical thinking are used to verify what it is that we know, to interrogate and challenge what we know too. So it's a whole series of, of mental processes uh, which really are accurately summed by the word that we all commonly know, uh, by the common word that we all know, um, thinking. And of course, if that's what critical thinking is, you can see um, why, it's, uh, why it's very important. One of the other things about definitions for critical thinking that I should point out, though, is that a lot of the particulars of critical thinking are defined by what it is that you're thinking about. So if you're a biologist or if you're a political scientist or if you're an educator, the processes that you use in those disciplines to do the critical thinking are probably, are probably different. And I think this is probably one of the reasons why there's a lot of different definitions uh, for critical thinking. As teachers, I think that a lot of times we define critical thinking by its absence. We know when students are not critical thinking. We see it when they're just memorizing material. Uh, when they want problems on the exams that are exactly the same as the homework problems uh, because they know that they can, uh, they can handle that. They're learning material in a very sort of superficial way. They can't really use the material. They can repeat it and frequently they forget the information. So we sort of define or we know when critical uh, thinking is, uh, is, is absent. So critical thinking is extremely important, especially when we think about the global society and the kind of problems that we are facing really across the world, whether they are social problems or environmental problems, they are complex issues and we need to have people thinking about them in ways that will generate the kind of quality solutions that these complicated problems uh, demand. So that's what critical thinking is, and that's why it's important. Now, I think the more interesting question is, can we teach people to critically think? And I'm going to maintain, yes, we can. And I'm going to suggest that there are, um, in fact, I think that it's, it's well established by the research that we can teach students to uh, critically think, and that we, in fact, know something about ways of teaching critical thinking that are particularly effective. I want to mention four ways or four things we know uh, about teaching critical thinking that enable us to do a good job of, of teaching it. First of all, uh, thinking skills develop best when they are explicitly taught. All right? You teach people how to critically think by talking about critical thinking. They don't develop all that well by osmosis, which is the way they are most often taught. What happens in many classrooms is that students see a really good critical thinker in action, or they read the writings of someone who is a particularly good critical thinker. And they do learn by osmosis. They do learn some things about critical thinking, but they learn much better when those skills are sort of es explicitly taught. I often quote the research of a Canadian engineer named Donald Woods who did an interesting study of the engineering program at his university. In that four-year program, he estimated that students solved about, or that students watched faculty solve about a thousand different problems. He also uh, estimated that students were assigned about 3,000 homework assignments. He didn't estimate how many students actually did. Um, but they were assigned about 3,000 programs, uh, or problems. But despite all of this sort of problem-solving activity, he writes, despite all this activity, the students showed negligible improvement in problem-solving skills. What they did acquire was a set of memorized procedures for about 3,000 problem solutions that they could, with varying degrees of success, recall. See, so students were solving problems but not developing the kind of awareness of the uh, sol problem-solving processes that they, um, uh, that they were using. 
So one of the things that I think needs to change if we're really serious about uh, teaching critical thinking uh, skills is that we have to start teaching them explicitly. We have to start talking to students about critical thinking skills and not just imagining that they're picking up those thinking skills by watching us do it. Okay, now how do we talk about the critical thinking skills? Well, that takes me to my second point under how, we, uh, under how it is that we um, uh, teach students to critically think, and that is that critical thinking skills develop with practice. Okay, it's a simple idea, but the fact of the matter is you don't learn how to critically think unless you are critically thinking, all right? Now, I'm a sort of a liberal artist from my, uh, from my inside out. I'm a writer, I write books, and um, I, my academic background is in uh, communication. So as you might imagine, I had a pretty lackluster career in mathematics, okay? Uh, and uh, one of the things that was always sort of hard for me in mathematics was that I always kind of got persuaded that I really did understand it. You know, I would be sitting in math class, I don't know if this has ever happened to you before, and the teacher is solving the problem on the board, and it looks so easy. A lot of times I didn't even think I needed to take notes. It was just so obvious until I got home and tried to do the homework problem. And then, by golly, I didn't understand it at all. I couldn't do the problem at all, all right? So what needed to happen for me in math classes to be more successful was some practice in class where I could actually see whether or not I did understand, and I could do that when there was a teacher present to help me. All right, I get a lot of, I'm sure all of you who are teachers now, you get a lot of desperate emails from students that are, uh, you know, that are delivered about 11.30 p.m. at night and they're stuck on a particular problem or trying to figure something out. And they, of course, don't know that old professors go to bed about 9 o'clock and uh, certainly are not going to answer, uh, answer a desperate uh, email question. So students need, uh, need to are going to develop their critical thinking uh, skills better if they are practicing, uh, doing, practicing uh, doing that. Thirdly, right along with that practice, students need thinking skills develop better when students are getting feedback from their teachers and also starting to give themselves feedback. Now I want to talk a little bit about the kind of feedback from teachers that is really going to help students when they're practicing develop those critical thinking skills. The first thing is that teachers ourselves, we must be aware of the critical thinking skills that we use. And a lot of times I think we're not. You know, the problem is we're so, for, they're so natural. They're so a part of how we think. And because a lot of times we were not taught these skills explicitly, we really need to spend some time doing some reflection so that we understand the processes that we're using when we solve problems or when we're critically thinking. Because if we understand those processes, see this is one of the ways that teachers can really improve the impact of modeling good problem solving skills or critical thinking skills for students. If teachers will just simply talk out loud about what's going through their mind. See, a lot of times we don't give students that sort of, it's so sort of a natural part of how we think, we don't say it out loud to students. And yet if we did, especially if we said, well, I would think about it this way, well, no, maybe I wouldn't really think about it. I'm not sure that I, you know, if we just gave that kind of verbal, uh, a description to students, that would, I think, really enhance the value of our trying to model the thinking for them. But we have got to become more aware of the processes that we use when we are critically thinking. The other thing that's important here, and these I think are easy to understand but difficult to execute skills, the second one is that when students are practicing and they're not doing it very well, we have to be really keen observers. Here's where I think the coaching metaphor sort of helps. When coaches are watching players execute, they're carefully attending to what it is that the player is doing so that they can provide feedback about that particular action. So we have to start really listening to students and not so much focusing on whether or not they're getting the right answer, but 
but focusing on the processes that they're using to get to that conclusion. The way that they're supporting evidence, the way that they're constructing the argument. That's what we have to start observing. And then I also think that students really need teachers who will let them start thinking about how they're thinking. See, I think a lot of times we, teaching is too much about telling. You know, I think this is, comes from parenting maybe. The fact of the matter that we're just, anything a student needs to know, a teacher is right there to tell them, okay? Teaching is telling. That, I wouldn't rule that out completely, but I also think sometimes students need to discover some of these things for themselves. So rather than just telling them what they're doing wrong or what they're doing right as they're trying to construct an argument, we need to ask questions that will allow the student to sort of discover or think through or make the student aware of what it is that they're, uh, what it is that they're uh, doing. So thinking skills really develop with feedback from teachers, but also when students start themselves thinking about what they're doing. And here you have to be a little bit of patient with students because I don't know about these students, but most of my students are not very much aware of themselves as learners. Uh, when I was teaching about the second week of my uh, communication courses, I used to, once I thought students had kind of an understanding of how the content was in the course, of what it was they were going to be learning, the kind of configuration of the content in the course, I asked them to write a paragraph which described how they proposed they would go about learning this material. And it was a lot of, what do you, what do you want? What, what, what do you want me to write? And I would say, well, describe how you're going to learn this material. And the paragraphs I got were, you know, pretty short and pretty tortured. Uh, they would say things like, well, I'm going to go over my notes. And I always used to get after my students for that. You don't go over your notes. You need to get into your notes. There's a big difference. Going over, getting into is where you really start, uh, where you really start to uh, learn them. So um, students, you know, need when they start reflecting about how it is that they're thinking and the processes that they're using, um, you need to be patient with them as they begin to explore that uh, for themselves. And finally, the fourth thing we know about how to teach critical thinking skills is that we know that those skills evolve, that students learn those, that anyone learns those on an incremental basis rather than all at once. For a while in the state we tried, um, in the states we tried actually uh, having critical thinking courses. The idea was that sort of at the front end of an educational experience we'd have a student take a quick course on critical thinking and then they'd know how to do it and the rest of us wouldn't have to worry about it. Well that just did not work, okay. It's pretty difficult to learn how to critically think without having something to think about. So you need to, you need to teach critical thinking in the context of the disciplines, all right? So if you're teaching political science, you want students to start thinking like, uh, like uh, political uh, science. So we've learned about critical thinking, the same thing that we learned about writing, and that is that we have to teach it to students across an entire educational experience. And really, I think it's one of those kind of lifelong learning uh, skills as well. So I would say yes, we can definitely teach students how to critically think. And four things to remember if that's a goal that you have is that first of all, critical thinking skills develop best when you are explicitly teaching them. Secondly, they develop when students have the opportunity to practice. And I think students need the opportunity to practice in the presence of a teacher who can provide them some feedback. Certainly they need to practice at home as well, but they need to be practicing in class. Thirdly, thinking skills develop when students get feedback from their teachers and when they start uh, giving themselves uh, some feedback as well. And finally, thinking skills skills evolve um, across uh, an educational experience, they develop incrementally. So last, the last thing I want to, and my last point is the, is the longest here, so don't get too excited about cocktails just yet. But I wanted to talk a little bit about why I think that learner-centered teaching is, what it is about learner-centered teaching that makes it a particularly powerful way to develop students' critical thinking uh, skills. And here we need to start also with some definitions. What is learner-centered teaching? And just like with critical thinking, there's lots of different definitions. With learner-centered teaching, people frequently 
uh, define it with examples. There will be a particular teaching strategy or approach and people will attach the learner-centered label to it. So there's a certain kind of definitional looseness about learner-centered teaching. But I'm going to define it by talking about four characteristics of learner-centered teaching which I think make it particularly effective when your goal is to teach uh, students how to think. First of all, Learner-centered teaching focuses on what students are doing. For a long time, we focus on what teachers are doing, all right? And I don't want you to think that that's a bad or a wrong focus, because what we believed was, which is true, that if we developed ourselves as teachers, that that would promote more and better learning.